I greet you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. The idea of a unified field theory is an attempt to tie the four fundamental forces of nature together in a single theory. In these videos I explain one universal process of energy exchange that forms the unity of life and oneness that we have in physics and mathematics. This process is relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum of light. The electromagnetic field has two polarities of positive and negative charge that interact with each other relative to the movement of the atoms. We have light charges expanding out and opposite charges contracting and cancelling themselves out as a process of continuous creation. Relative to the atoms, photon oscillations or vibrations form the movement of charge and flow of electromagnetic fields in three-dimensional space. Each one of the four fundamental forces has their own individual part to play in this process, and this is why they vary so greatly in magnitude and behavior. If we start with the electromagnetic force that is carried by the photon, forming the movement of charge, creating the flow of electric and magnetic fields. In this theory, it is this interaction between the photons and the electron probability cloud of the atoms that form the ever-changing world of our everyday life that we see and feel as the passage or continuum of time. We have the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, with each photon oscillation or vibration only occurring once, but with the process of energy exchange as a whole forming a unique and uncertain future. With the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons, acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer, forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. This might sound very far-fetched, but the electromagnetic force is responsible for all macroscopic properties of the chemical elements, including all chemical bonding. Whenever objects touch, it is charge that makes contact with energy, momentum and electric charge being conserved properties as a system changes over a period of time. The electromagnetic force is fundamental to cell life with the build-up and organization of positive and negative charge relative to the membrane of each living cell also, all man-made devices using electric current, such as television, lasers and computers, rely on the principles of the electromagnetic force. For the electromagnetic force to form what we measure as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table, we need another fundamental force, and this comes in the form of the strong nuclear force or interaction. The strong nuclear force holds matter together, being a short-range force that only works inside the atomic nucleus. This is just what we need if we have an interactive process relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the nucleus. In other theories it can seem puzzling that there is no concept or flow of time in the subatomic world within the atoms that is governed by the strong nuclear force. But in this theory nothing could be more logical because the future is unfolding with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment 
in an interactive process that is unfolding outside the atomic nucleus and is relative to the electromagnetic force. In such a theory, the mathematics of quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process with classical physics representing processes over a period of time as in Newton's differential equations. In ancient Greece it was believed that the atoms were indestructible but now we know this is not so. Atoms that decay with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation could represent a problem for a theory that says that the future is unfolding photon by photon relative to the atoms of the periodic table. But the weak nuclear force explains radioactive decay with some very unusual characteristics that can only really be understood as part of a logical process if what we see and feel as the continuum of time is formed by photon-electron interactions. It is impossible to predict when a particular atom will decay regardless of how long the atom has existed. However, for a group of atoms, the group expected decay rate is characterized in what is called half-lifes. The half-life represents a time after which half of the group's nuclei will have decayed. Mainstream physics has no objective or logical understanding of why we should have such a property as half-life when we are dealing with decaying atoms. But if time and the future itself is relative to the atoms interacting with electromagnetic radiation or light, it would be logical that probabilities are built into the process itself. Therefore we can't predict the decay of an individual atom and only measure the half-life of a group of atoms. It is interesting that when we have an atom with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation, there is the potential that the future will be relative to that radioactivity. This might be in the form of a potential cancer risk. I like to think that this represents the delicate symmetry of space and time that life is based upon being broken by the radiation. This idea is supported by the weak nuclear force being the only known interaction that does not conserve parity and violates CP symmetry. In this theory, the future is unfolding with the movement of charge, with matter-antimatter annihilation, representing a fundamental part of the process. The annihilation of the antimatter represents the past, with perfect symmetry between positive and negative charge, and between matter and antimatter. It is this symmetry that is represented by CP symmetry that is broken by the radiation or radioactive decay of the weak force or interaction. We could say that there is a mirror image between the future and the past at the moment of creation or at each dipole moment. The three fundamental forces that have been explained so far, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, are all interactions that are carried by a quantum or an elementary particle. The gravitational force is the odd one out and is modelled on a continuous classical field. Mainstream physics believes this is because the elementary particle that forms gravity has not yet been found. But in this theory, it is because gravity is not a real force at all. It is only a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. This idea is supported mathematically with electromagnetism and gravity sharing the inverse square law representing the geometry of this universal dynamic process.
Every action creates a reaction, and the inward force of gravity is the reaction to the outward momentum of photon energy, with the movement of charge as a process of continuous energy exchange, or continuous creation. Photon energy slows up the rate that time flows, forming a vortex in space relative to the energy and momentum of each object. Mass will increase relative to this, with the time dilation of Einstein's relativity being part of this universal process. There is no action at a distance in this theory. Just as in Einstein's theory of general relativity, the gravitational field propagates at the speed of light with the electric and magnetic fields. Within such a dynamic process, we can think of electromagnetism as an interactive ether that moves relative to the Earth. Therefore, it would not show up in any experiment that was relative to the movement of the Earth. This process unites gravity with the other three fundamental forces within a universal process that is unfolding in just three dimensions with one variable in the form of time. In such a theory, the parallel universes of string theory are just future possibilities and opportunities in our one three-dimensional universe of continuous energy exchange continuous creation. At the most fundamental level, this is a process of symmetry, forming and breaking, that forms greater degrees of freedom for entropy or disorganization, and also greater degrees of freedom for the diversity and complexity of life. With the whole theory being explained by just one equation representing the dynamic geometry of this process. In my other videos I explain how this can be a universal process of energy exchange that is relative to the different structures that the atoms form with different phase changes in matter changing how the process unfolds at different temperatures. We can see this at very low temperature with superconductivity with magnetic field lines locking together, with gravity disappearing in the reference frame of the experiment. We have a phase change at the temperature of everyday life, with the process being relative to the atoms of the periodic table. At high temperatures, we have another phase change, with the process unfolding on much larger scales in the form of plasma with charge being able to cover a large area of interstellar space, or even a whole star. This can be seen in a solar eclipse, when magnetic field lines can be seen in the sun's outer corona. Therefore it is totally logical that we have one universal process, from the cells within us to the stars above us, even though these processes are unfolding on a totally different scale, the geometry of the process remains the same. This can be seen with cellular structure at the largest scale of the universe, with galaxies forming where these structures come in contact. And at the smallest scale, we have the quantum foam with the similar cellular structure. In between the two, we have the cellular structure of cell life. This spherical geometry can even be seen in these images from the International Space Station, with a candle flame in zero gravity naturally forming a sphere that is interacting with the environment on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. In our everyday life, fire would take on the same spherical symmetry if the symmetry was not broken by this universal process of energy exchange that forms the potential for the ever-changing world of our everyday life, forming what we see and feel as the passage or continuum of time. In such a theory, the future is not based on total randomness. It is based on broken spherical symmetry 
and this takes the form of the most beautiful geometrical shape with the Fibonacci spiral being visible almost everywhere in nature. In this theory we see the Fibonacci spiral in plant life not because of economy of growth but because we have a universal process of symmetry forming and breaking. This is why the Fibonacci spiral can be seen in so many different ways that are totally unconnected. This is a very beautiful example with a girl with wet hair flicking her head and as the water comes off her hair it forms a Fibonacci curve. The connection with all these Fibonacci spirals and curves is that they were all formed over a period of time. It is the continuum of space-time as a geometrical process of symmetry forming and breaking that forms a Fibonacci spiral. This can also explain why these spirals are never perfect. It is because they are formed out of broken spherical symmetry relative to the atoms of the periodic table. In my next video I will explain in detail how consciousness is part of this unified field. Thanks for watching. Please sub and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.